How's it going guys? It's Dennis and I'm back with another video. This video is a little bit different. We're not doing any camera or no video. Uh, we're just going to be talking about a stock that I've been invested in. So today we're going to be talking about TSOY. It's a yield max ETF and it's a dividend ETF. Uh, it's been going around on Twitter, on YouTube and on TikTok. Uh, it's well known for its high yields as you can see on the screen. It's yielding 52.73% at the moment when it comes to yearly basis. But once again, it is a monthly distribution. Uh, this stock has been going off for that 52.73%. This is actually the lowest it's been in a while. Uh, it goes, it varies up to 60 to 70%. So it's a pretty high paying dividend stock. Now, what is this stock? This stock doesn't trade right into Tesla. It doesn't purchase stocks in Tesla but it does trade synthetic covered calls on Tesla. What are synthetic covered calls? Well, we'll get at that later in the video, but pretty much it is a pretty risky strategy and it's not a stock that everybody should be invested in. But if you do have a small piece of your portfolio that you want to invest in, I would say this ETF is a good ETF and then to invest in. It brings you high value dividends. It does have some risk, but if you're bullish on Tesla, you might as well put your money into it. Of course, like I said before, there is risk behind it like any other stock, and I would say this one has higher risk, but it pays off with the dividends that you are receiving on a monthly basis. We also are gonna go over the dividends that I've received and dividends that have been distributed, the average dividends that have been being received, and also we're gonna talk about a strategy I'll be using and a strategy that actually the owner of this Yield Max ETFs has mentioned himself and I would say is a good strategy to follow. So go ahead and stick around and so let's get into the rest of the video. So when it comes to my dividends that I received from TSOY, my in total dividend return for the four returns I had was $194.19. That was with the first dividend of June 15 that I got for $5.62 at 80 cents per share. Then there was the one in July 17 for $7.82 that I received for $1.07 uh, per share. Then there was the one in August 14 for $67.07 .07 at 83 cents per share. And then finally, the recent one in September where I received $113.68 at 58 cents per share. So a pretty good amount of dividends received from the stock. And as you can see, it built up pretty dramatically because I started putting in more and more shares. With starting off with seven shares in the beginning in June, then going up in August to 80 shares, and now in September owning 194 shares. Obviously a stock that I'm willing to invest in and take a risk in for the high returns does it, that it does give. Now for the year of 2023 and the first year that it started giving out dividends, Tesla has so far given out nine dividends. Nine months, nine dividends. So in those nine months, the nine dividends that have been given out were started in January 5th, with the first one being 99 cents or a dollar if you round up. Then in February, you had 90 cents. In March, you had 90 cents. In April, you had 82 cents. In May, you had 44 cents. In June, you had 80 cents. In July, which is the one that I received as well, was a dollar and six cents, the highest so far. In August, there was 83 cents, and in September, there was 58 cents. Now, if you take all these nine months and you average it down to an average return, that would be roughly 82 cents. Of course, it's a little bit skewed with the high return of July with a dollar and six cents, but overall, it's still a high return. Now, would I say invest in the stock? If you're looking to invest in a dividend stock that pays high yield like this, then yes, if you're not worried about the one thing that we'll get to next, which is the growth aspect, then yes, you should invest in this. Now, are you gonna always receive these dividends? No, you won't. As you can see on the other months, such as in May, you received 44 cents, a pretty low amount of return. And you have months like this month, which was 58 cents, which is also a decently low return. But then you have months such as January, February, and July, which returned a dollar, or 90 cents and that's a pretty good return i would say so myself so if you're looking for a bullish stock on tesla and you want to get dividend returns from it i would say this is a good choice especially if you're really trying to retire on dividend income would i put my whole portfolio on this no but would i put at least five ten percent of it yes i would and that's what i'm doing 
Now, like mentioned before, there's one thing that I look out for when it comes to investing in Tesla, and that is the growth aspect. As you can see on the screen, the growth has not been so good when it comes to Tesla. Uh, that is because Tesla itself has dropped and overall so has the market as in recording this video. Uh, if you see on the screen, Tesla has dropped since inception it has dropped 35.5%. Yes, that's a good amount of money, but if we're looking at the average return being 50%, you would still be making up your money and having profit as well. So if you're trying to get a growth stock, this obviously is not the stock. And of course, these times are a little bit tough when it comes to the stock market in general, with the market going down and being a little bearish due to news of government shutdowns and also a possible recession. But once again, if you are bullish on Tesla and you think Tesla will go to the moon and it will skyrocket higher, as some critics are saying it will, maybe even reach the $1,000 mark, which is a little bit skeptical, but there is a possibility, then I would say this is a good stock to invest in, especially with the volatility of Tesla, meaning you would receive higher dividends, you would receive higher growth, and you would receive all the benefits that Tesla does, plus the dividends included. So how does Tesla pay out such high dividends? Well, Tesla investors invest in Tesla. Obviously, like mentioned before, they do not directly invest in Tesla. They do not hold shares in Tesla. What they do is they trade synthetic covered calls on Tesla. What does that mean? Well, they are pretty much buying calls on Tesla. They're then selling puts on Tesla. And with those buy and sell puts, they're creating a false position of holding 100 shares or how many contracts they do of Tesla and on those false positions they then sell a covered call. They do a short term covered call on their out of the money long term sell put and buy call. What does that do? Well it just gives them the ability to keep getting the premium on Tesla while not going fully into the position giving the ability to give us such high returns. Pretty much they're leveraging their money to an extreme. Once again, like I said, this is a risk. There is unlimited risk when it comes to the downfall. And also there is the fact that they cannot receive the full returns of a high gain on Tesla due to the limits of the covered call that they are selling on their position. So there's pretty much as if you were to own a covered call on Tesla yourself you could only receive the premium and the little gains that you get to the strike price of your contract. Now say Tesla falls, you have unlimited loss, of course, because you are holding those shares. But if Tesla goes past your contract price, you cannot receive the money past that contract price. So once again, it's limited in gain. That's why it does not skyrocket the same as Tesla does, but it has unlimited, unlimited fall. So once again, a risky stock. A risky strategy but it does pay off since it is being done by a pretty well-known uh, group of team and also they're well, constantly monitoring it and constantly looking at their strategies and reevaluating the risk that they're able to take now with the dividends and the growth and the risk aside how will I be trading Tesla and what will my strategy be well, my strategy for Tesla is to keep it at 5 and 10% of my portfolio and reinvest all the dividends I receive. I also will be adding more shares into the portfolio, into Tesla, as still keeping at 5 10% on a monthly or weekly basis. Why will I be doing this? Well, because if I have extra income, why not add it in? Now, why will I be doing this? Well, actually, the owner of Yield Max ETFs himself came out on the podcast with armchair income shout out to him and actually said this is the best strategy you could use for tesla i'm going to go ahead and play the video of it right now and we'll go ahead and come back to this video so can you explain the difference in outcome between those two extremes the one who withdraws everything and the one who uh, reinvests everything you know what will happen is when you have such high yields right the 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 price the nav the price of the etf goes down by the amount we distribute. So let's use the example of, uh, let's say you had 100 shares and we distributed a dollar, right? You get a dollar, uh, you get $100 in dividends. It's like, that's great, that felt good. But the stock price dropped, right, by that dollar, right? If we were 20 bucks and we distributed a dollar, when we go ex-div, you'll get a dollar of cash and the stock goes down to 19. Well, if you don't reinvest, now your market value is 
uh, you know, 1900 if you were at a $20 stock, right, for 2019, you went from 2000 to $1,900 in your, in your stock value. The next yield that you get will be based off of 1900 not based off of 2000 right? Because, you know, you're, now look, the market value may go up, but let's just say market value stays flat. You know, in that scenario, the yields you're going to get, it might not be a dollar, right? It might be less, it might be more. So you have the same number of shares, and if our yield goes down, right, you're not going to get the same amount. So one of the things that, the reason we talk about reinvesting the dividend is because putting that back in, you get back up to the $2,000 of market value, right? And actually, you'll compound your shares, which we all know the power of compounding, uh, and you'll end up kind of improving the amount of yield you're getting by reinvesting those dividends because you're really making an additional investment back into the portfolio. Whereas if you don't, right, you'll be kind of stuck at that one yield rate. So, you know, look, I think it all depends what people, you know, why they buy the ticker in the first place. If you're yeah. grow, if your idea is this is kind of a risk, you know, alternative risky asset for me, which I would say Tesla falls into that category, then you probably should be reinvesting the dividends so that you've already known there's risk associated. If you're just going to take the cash out, you have this risk that the ETF drops and drops and drops as we're distributing the yield. Now, the flip side of this is as we're generating that covered call premium, the price of the ETF will go up. So let's say Tesla will happen to be flat for a whole month, right? We would tick up 1% a week if we could sell calls for 1% a week, right? We would tick up, 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 and then di and distribute right back down and the nav would drop to where we started. That's if Tesla was flat. Of course it is not, but that's in a in vacuum what would happen there. Whereas if you reinvested that amount, yes, the stock would drop, but then your balance would go right back up because you've reinvested it. And then the amount you get paid on the yield next time would be higher even in a flat market. So it's it's one of those things that all depends how you're using these. Um, yeah, at how, you know what your intention is. We in general, I'm a bigger fan of knowing why I'm invested in Tesla because it's an alternative because I'm trying to do something that's not stock or bond related. It makes yep. sense to reinvest. But some people go, oh, I want to use this to pay my mortgage. OK, right. Just realize the risk you're taking. Back to that question. You do hear these comments sometimes, and I know that you've emphasized in other interviews that you lean more towards reinvesting, so that explains the reason behind that. It's just what you're using it for in your portfolio, right? I mean, that's, mm. that's you know, like if you're like, ooh, I want, like, if I, I want some kind of nice income that I can, you know, pay my mortgage on, you're taking a lot of risk with your principal just using Tesla, right? Because you're taking okay. Tesla risk. And you could get the benefit of Tesla going to 400 and your balance would grow and your yields would grow and that would be great. But there is a flip side to that. So now that we've seen the Yield Max ETF owner himself say that the best strategies to reinvest your dividends, how would this play out? Well, if you bought TSLY at the inception of the ETF at 100 shares at $20.06 per share, your annual dividend would have been $1,057.76. And that would have been distributed monthly. Now, after drip, your value would have been $3,360.82. Now, of course, this would have zero contribution from your end, and the year you would have ended with 203.91 shares owned. Now, assuming that the shares would have fallen by 35.5% as they have now, you would have ended your year with a new balance of $2,658.72, still coming above the $2,006 that you put in initially, even with the 35.5% growth that you've lost, but the dividends themselves would have saved you if the dividends stay the same at the estimated 52% that they've estimated at the moment and with the 35.5% that it has dropped as of right now. So assuming that all stays the same, you still would come out roughly $650 higher than what you would have put in a year ago. As you can see, this investment still pays off a good amount. And this is an investment that is has risk, of course, as any stock does, but the payout is still there. Even with a loss on growth, the dividends do save you at the end, only if you would reinvest it. If you do not reinvest it, you will lose in the end and you will not make up the value that you put in. Of course, you could put into another stock and maybe that will make you more value, but that's just another risk that you're gonna be taking rather than just reinvesting and earning more on your reinvestment. 
So this is the strategy I would play and the strategy I am gonna play on Tesla because this is the best strategy, strategy there is. And now to make it even more complicated, uh, what I will be doing with the strategy is expanding it and using margin that I'll be earning to put back into Tesla or put into other stocks or even take it out from my own personal expenses since Tesla will be reinvested and I could just use the margin that I'll be gaining on the growth of Tesla. So that is Tesla, that is Tesla ETF, that is Yield Max ETF, and that is my video for it. I hope you guys enjoyed, I hope you guys enjoyed my content, enjoyed my information, and have a different view on Tesla, and maybe you guys will use the strategy that I'll be using on Tesla myself. So thank you once again for watching, sorry there's no video for today when it comes to seeing me, but hopefully this is still a good informational video. So that is me, my name is Dennis, I hope you guys subscribe, like, and wait for my next video next week.